I'm here outside City Hall in Sligo Town and as part of the Tread Softly Festival we're going to go inside now and meet local photographer Kieran McHugh. He has a beautiful photography exhibition called Into the Twilight. Kieran, we're here in the City Hall in County Sligo at your photography exhibition Into the Twilight, which is part of the Tread Softly Festival that's on at the moment. This exhibition is attracting an awful lot of attention because it's a little bit different, isn't it? What made you think of, where did you get the ideas for these photographs? Yeah, uh, this is a project that I suppose I've been working on for the last three years and it started out as it was just one photograph I'd taken uh, out of Glen Carr, uh, it's called The Waters in the Wild, I believe, is it here somewhere? This one, actually, yeah, this one. That I've taken it as one of my regular colour panoramic shots, and as often as not when I'm going out, I take some of the photographs on a day that the weather isn't ideal, so that you come back when the weather is perfect and you get the exact shot that you want. Uh, and I took this one, the weather wasn't great, and then started seeing this shot of light came down into it, and I was playing around at home, put it in black and white, and I said, oh, that's that works quite well. And then I thought, well, the, you know, because of Yeats' poem, um, the, the, uh, the Waters in the Wild seemed like a perfect title for it. So I shared it online, and I framed it, and it seemed quite popular. And I started thinking, well, that's, that's, you know, I haven't done much black and white photography before, and it was an area that I wanted to learn more about. And then I thought, well, you know, I, no, I don't think anyone had really done anything before on the actual landscape of Yeats that he was immersed in and that he spent so much of his time in. Uh, so basically, I started doing some research into, but uh, went down to Charlie Burns Bookstore in Galway and ended up getting uh, a lot of secondhand books on Yeats. And I suppose it had been since my leaving search that I uh, had immersed myself in Yeats to that extent and surprised myself that I enjoyed it. Um, and started getting, I suppose, trying to get an idea of the imagery used in his poems and some of the thought process and trying to see so a lot of his language is very sensual and you can really you can see the mystique the wild and the intrigue comes through in it and i tried to see well how could i tap into that and how, how could i try and portray that in my work and the more i read about his work a very dominant theme came throughout of his, his uh, photographs and i mean obviously his uh, the landscape, and the Irish landscape in general, is a catalyst for much of his writings, and I suppose there's no need to explain his strong connection with Sligo and the, and the Northwest in general. Um, but a very strong theme was the fact that Yeats believed that we, we that we lived in uh, that we, we lived in two separate worlds: one that we could see, and even back in the 20s and 30s of the last century, he felt there was a materialistic world that we had we had lost touch with our true Celtic and pre-Celtic roots. And then the second world, which was again separate but related, was the uh, the world of the little people. It was the realm of fa fairies, the two of the Danon, the spirits of the dead, our uh, mythical warriors. And he believed that if we looked hard enough, we could actually train ourselves to see this world again, and that we would be more rounded people, and uh, we would be happier people if we were able to do this. So. Well, my, my regular work is, as I said, you know, scenic pictures where people buy and you've got, you're looking at the you know, beaches and mountains on a, a pretty scenic day. And f I didn't feel that this was going to be true for this collection. I wanted to get the world, first of all, that he, you know, that he lived in. It wasn't the, the glory, you know, the, the obvious... Chocolate blocks. Exactly, or, or you know, the, the calendar shots or the work that I normally do. And I said, I wanted to try and get more into his thinking and, and reading his poems and just going through, you know, in some cases, as simple as the titles and some of them was reading through poems and even the, the thought process behind the poems, you know, there's only what he's saying and then you're going to read what is he actually saying for, for someone like myself that wouldn't, uh, that, you know, that hadn't looked at his, his work in, in nearly 20 years. Um, so that was, I said, as a poet, he, he, he saw his job as leading us, the reader, through these two worlds, the, the interconnected worlds, from the, uh, from the real world that we found ourselves in back into this uh, other world as, as he saw it and he'd done that through his verse and through imagery. Um, and I wanted to try and, and, and tap into that basically. Um, I chose black and white as a medium because, uh, like much of Yeats's work, it's, uh, it's not the first reading that makes sense to you, that it's a little bit more surreal and it's subjective, uh, whereas black and white photography by its very nature is surreal. Um, so it's automatically open to interpretive, both as a photographer, how you shoot it, how you develop it, and also uh, to the person looking at it, you know, they're, they're imagining what the colours would be. So I thought as a medium, black and white photography worked well with the theme that I chose. Well, I do think the black and white 
definitely works well. You're, you're 100% right there. I also think that you captured the atmosphere of the Northwest because, as you say, with the calendar shots and the chocolate, block, the chocolate box shots, that's what we would wish it always looks like, but yes. it doesn't. And the one that I was really intrigued with is the silver apples of the moon. Yes, and I, I, I was looking at that and would you mind just telling me what time did you take that photograph because it looks as if it's the middle of the night. Yes, the shot was taken, I think it was summer two years ago, it was one of the earlier shots that I had, it was one, it was one, one of the ones that sprung to mind. Some of these photographs, the images were taken first and then the, the associations and names followed to them. Others like that one was taken, I said okay I just love that name, uh, and I said I have to do something, I love Hazelwood, I love that name, I have to work something into that. And I said, I have to go out to Hazelwood at Moonlight. And I hadn't done any real Moonlight photography before. And I tried an area, so a lot of times you start including the moon in the shot, and then the whole thing was bright. And I said, no, let's, let's like the poet itself, let, let's keep it as subtle as we can be. So I went out and took the photograph at about uh, half 11 at night in Hazelwood. I had to uh, rope a friend into coming out with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit scary down there. Because again, it was, it was okay, the moon was out, but otherwise you're the only one down there. Uh, and it's a challenge in itself taking photographs in the pitch dark. You have the camera, you take a longer exposure, but even trying to, you're using the headlights of the car to light up trees to get a focus point and that so it makes it all a bit more interesting and that's what a lot of this project for me was it challenged me as a photographer to do something new and to go after something that I hadn't really tried before uh, and I have to say I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the process of it. And Kieran, from here where does your exhibition go? Well when the exhibition isn't touring it's resident in my own gallery in Kearney in North Sligo and you can see details of that on my website uh, www.kieranmcq.com